Hello Space Cats and welcome back to my channel. Chandra Space Observatory is an X-ray space telescope that was launched and deployed on July 23rd, 1999. It was deployed on the Columbia Space Shuttle and it was the first ever space shuttle mission that was commanded by a woman. Yes, go girl power. Chandra originally had a planned lifetime of only five years but 20 years later, and it's still going strong. In this week's video, we're gonna be talking about Chandra's legacy, so let's jump right into it. The name Chandra comes from the Indian-American astrophysicist Subramanian Chandrasekhar, who is famous for the Chandrasekhar limit. This is the mass limit at which a dead star will become either a neutron star or a black hole. If it doesn't reach this minimum mass limit, then the star will end up as a white dwarf. X-ray emission is emitted by astronomical objects that contain hot gases with temperatures up to millions of degrees. Chandra is designed to probe the hottest regions in our universe. Things like exploding stars, also known as supernova, clusters of galaxies, and it can even see matter up to the last minute before it falls into a black hole. There are three mechanisms primarily responsible for X-ray continuum emission. Firstly is synchrotron radiation. This is where charged particles such as electrons are accelerated within a magnetic field. Secondly is Bremsstrahlung radiation. This is where fast electrons are decelerated within the electric field of another charged particle and losing some of its energy as radiation. Thirdly is Compton scattering. This is where photons scatter off high energy electrons, stealing some of their energy. X-rays are absorbed by Earth's atmosphere. So X-ray telescopes such as Chandra have to observe from outer space. But Chandra isn't in low Earth orbit like Hubble is, so astronauts can't go there and service it like they often do with Hubble. Instead, Chandra follows a highly elliptical orbit, reaching up to 140,000 kilometers altitude. That's like a third of the way to the moon. This allows Chandra to have very efficient and very long observations. It can go up to 55 hours of uninterrupted observations without the Earth getting in the way. The telescope system consists of four pairs of mirrors, but these aren't like traditional optical mirrors. And this is because X-ray photons have very high energies. Using traditional mirrors, they would be completely absorbed. Instead, X-ray mirrors are designed so that X-ray photons hit them at grazing angles. And for this reason, in X-ray telescopes, you'll see that the mirror design typically looks like barrel shape. At the time of construction, Chandra's mirrors were the smoothest and cleanest mirrors ever to be made. There are two scientific instruments on board, the Advanced CCD Imaging Spectrometer, ASIS, and the High Resolution Camera, HRC. ASIS is an integral field spectrograph. It measures the position and energy of incoming X-rays. It can tell us the chemical composition of astronomical objects from dips and peaks in the measured spectra. For example, iron is one of the brightest emission lines in X-ray, and it's really important to tell us about the temperature and density of stellar winds. Chandra is the highest resolution imaging telescope for X-rays ever and the Crab Nebula was one of the first astronomical objects that Chandra observed. It is a remnant from a supernova that happened in 1054 AD, and it's powered by a magnetized spinning neutron star known as a pulsar. Today, we can learn even more about the Crab Nebula by combining multi-wavelength data of different telescopes. For example, here you can see X-rays from Chandra in blue and white, 
optical light from Hubble in purple and infrared light from Spitzer in pink. Other highlights of Chandra's legacy includes the first to detect X-ray emission from the supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy. The discovery of medium mass black holes to fill the gap between stellar mass black holes and supermassive black holes. The observation of colliding clusters of galaxies such as the bullet cluster that allowed us to put limits on the cross section of dark matter. And the discovery that the X-ray emission from Jupiter was actually being emitted from the poles and not from the auroral ring as first thought. NASA's Chandra mission launched in the same year as ESA's X-ray telescope mission, XMM-Newton. So make sure you check back later in the year for my video on XMM-Newton's 20th anniversary. In the meanwhile, if you enjoyed the video, let me know in the comments section below what your highlight of Chandra was. And as always, make sure you like, share, and subscribe.